Hi, this is Tom Barton of the University of Chicago and Internet 2, and I'm the manager of the Grouper Project. Uh, this is part two of a three-part uh, video introduction to Grouper. This one is centered on Grouper's core access management capabilities. So here are some, here's a depiction of some of the core concepts and core objects that Grouper has managed pretty much from the beginning. Uh, first of all, it has a notion of folders, or sometimes called stems or namespaces. Uh, folders are simply places in which other objects that are managed in Grouper can be organized and permissions to them and delegated access to them be assigned and managed. Uh, the main thing a folder can contain is a group. A group has direct members and it could also have subgroups. And then the, the direct members of a subgroup are known as in indirect members of the group or effective members sometimes. And you can see some of the dashed arrows in the diagram indicating that that group's direct members become indirect members of the other group. Uh, Grouper also has a notion of composite groups or group math where you can define the membership of one group as being the intersection of the memberships of two other groups or the membership of one group minus the membership of another group or as the union of two groups if you'd like. Uh, Grouper has a number of permissions associated with folders and with groups. For folders, uh, you can assign someone or some other group, perhaps, the ability to create groups in that folder or named with the name of that folder, kind of like uh, folders in a, in a file system with path names. You can also assign a person or a group the ability to create subfolders in that folder. They will, in turn, have the ability to delegate further subfolder creation and further group creation in their subfolders. For a group, you can assign a person or, an, or a group uh, the ability to administer the group. You can do everything with it, changing all of its properties and managing who else has what privileges to it, as given in the following uh, privileges here. Uh, you can assign who can, who can update just the membership of the group. Uh, you, can say, you can assign what um, people or groups are allowed to read the membership of the group, as opposed to simply knowing that it exists and what its other attributes are. You can separately manage who's allowed to view the group, who can even kind of see that it exists. And finally, you can assign a group an opt-in property or an opt-out property, which means that a user can opt themselves into membership or take themselves out of membership if they're so delegated. Um, so several of these permissions are used uh, and are, uh, are used in delegating uh, access uh, or delegating administrative or management privilege in the in Grouper's access management system. So creating groups you can assign to someone else, so that's a form of delegation. A much broader form and the broadest form of delegation in Grouper is to assign someone else the ability to create subfolders. They'll be able to go and do their entire operation and create their own subfolders and groups and assign who can do what with all that stuff themselves without involving you. So that's a very substantial delegation. And then on a per group basis, you might say who's the admin and likewise adopt, uh, assign who can update the membership and whether or not uh, individuals can opt themselves in and out of membership. Uh, beyond groups, um, Grouper also has attributes, roles, and permissions. Um, attributes themselves are objects like groups and folders are. They are located in folders and so you can delegate who has what permission to create attributes named how. Okay, um, They can go ahead and create and define those attributes and then they can also decide uh, who can assign them to what uh, given that they're allowed to assign things to other objects. Uh, attributes can be assigned to a variety of different things in Grouper including folders, groups, memberships, members, and to roles. Well, hold on, I got ahead of myself there. What's a role? Well, basically, a role is a group which is enabled to have permissions assigned to it or to memberships in it. And a permission is essentially an extension of an attribute. It's a special kind of attribute. Um, like with most permissions, uh, it really involves a triple of information about which subjects are allowed to perform which actions on which resources. And Grouper has a very rich uh, ability to characterize those three dimensions and to manage the creation of permissions and their assignment uh, through using delegation. Uh, in particular, in terms of uh, 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 the, the, with roles, there is a notion of role inheritance, that is, by membership inheritance or by sub-role, sub-group membership in a role, so that permissions in a superior role flow to the in an inferior role and flow to that in a superior role. I always get that backwards. Um, there's also a notion of a resource hierarchy in Grouper. So you might have, for example, um, 
a resource uh, following a departmental hierarchy where you have the College of Arts and Sciences containing the math department and you might have some uh, permissions flow down or flow up, depending on how you organize that. So, as I said before, so because of the, the fact that the attributes and permissions themselves are objects in the uh, folder hierarchy of Grouper, they are subject to the delegation model and, and, and enabled by the delegation model that, that extends that for groups. So all of this, this uh, access management capability for both groups and for roles and attributes and permissions uh, it follows a rich delegation model. Um, in addition to having those kinds of objects, there are some lifecycle uh, support uh, you know, uh, capabilities in Grouper. A few of them, most notable ones, are that you can have start, effective start and end times assigned to an individual's membership in a group, or a group's membership in a group for that matter. Uh, you can move or copy folders and groups and other things around. If you didn't, if you find that uh, your organization has changed how it works, as happens from time to time, as new departments are created and other ones are put together or reorganizations happen, you may find yourself needing to move things around in the folder hierarchy that's supported. Uh, there are rules, as I illustrated briefly, I think in the in the first uh, of this first video series, uh, which which allow basically a business logic to be associated with the management of groups and memberships and roles and so forth. There is also a user audit capability, a comprehensive one that basically tracks uh, all management actions in, in Grouper, so who did what when. And there's also a point in time audit capability which allows you to report on the state of Grouper, of this access management repository, at any prior point in time, which is great for uh, attestation kinds of applications. Um, I'm going to now take you into an example. Uh, I'll start by showing you a little bit of my uh, group memberships at the University of Chicago. So here is a part of a screen that lists uh, my memberships. You can see that at the top left. And you probably can't see, but I'll magnify for you. It tells us that it's showing a 1 to 50 of 145 items. That is, I belong to 145 groups at University of Chicago. That may seem like a lot, but it really didn't, shouldn't be a surprise when you have a rather mature access management uh, strategy. Uh, we have more than 50 applications whose access is managed by a grouper and other, other uses uh, to which we use the access management system. Uh, and so it shouldn't be too surprising that as we get more fine-grained and, and get more uh, ramifications, more in, uh, impact of it, that those more groups, not a problem. Um, some of those group memberships are reflected uh, into our LDAP directory in the UC is member of attribute. And I've listed a few of the values of that attribute here, which are basically one of the forms of the names of some of those groups that I belong to. Um, there's a few of them here. Um, for example, one says that I belong to the senior directors group in the central IT group. That's for accessing some resources like wikis and, and, and shared uh, folders uh, for with stuff just for the senior management team for central IT. Uh, another says that I'm a member of the staff. I'm, basically, I'm a, I have a staff affiliation, uh, and that's used for a lot of simple access policy uh, management. Uh, another says that I'm authorized for to use the VPN service, and I will go into that example in just a moment. In fact, that moment is right now. So uh, our VPN, a virtual private network, um, uh, we have, uh, have over time increasingly sophisticated access management policies that it implements uh, to support more fine-grained kinds of uses. Um, so much so that we've had to uh, enforce, really, to we've exceeded the capacity of the VPN technologies that we've fielded here in the past, and we must use something uh, sophisticated and outboard like Grouper to do all that we do with it. Uh, so the VPN system itself looks at a single LDAP attribute. Uh, I've abbreviated here is called VPN authorized. Uh, that's pushed out there by Grouper. Uh, Grouper computes this based upon a number of things. Uh, basically, there's a number of groups that it rolls up into, you know, uh, which mem for which membership in one of them qualifies you, or makes you eligible for VPN service. But then there are some exceptions that could deny your access to the VPN, even if you might otherwise be eligible. So you can see there's uh, three different affiliations I've uh, illustratively listed here, staff, student, and postdoc, and something else called IRB that I'll explain in a moment. Uh, any of the membership in any of those will get you into with the VPN unless you're either in this closure group or locked. And now let me explain what these things mean. First of all, I want to talk about the distributed management aspect of this too, that it's not one, sys one authority or one business system that, so that manages all these group memberships. In fact, there's multiple sources of authority and systems of record that go into this thing. 
poor business systems, as you could imagine, determine for us, who is staff, who is student, and who is a postdoc, for example. The Institutional Review Board Office uh, determines uh, who belongs to this IRB group. They have needs, as you might not be surprised to learn, to keep their IRB uh, system behind a firewall. And to get behind the firewall, they need a VPN. And so sometimes they have to have someone use the IRB who isn't otherwise, say, a staff, a student, or a postdoc, and they get to say who that is, because only they know who they must support on their IRB system. And we let them go ahead and make those exceptions if necessary to get to the VPN. And then this closure group is actually managed by the identity management system in an automatic fashion. Uh, basically, when you, uh, when you're, when you're, when you uh, leave the University of Chicago, there is a, an automated stateful process that uh, removes your access to a wide variety of services. And one of the ways that we let you know is to send email. But another way, just in case you haven't been paying attention to that, and to get your attention, is we're going to kind of remove your access to a few services along the way to kind of um, flush you out in case you didn't realize that more resources of value to you might be going soon. And you should let us know if that doesn't seem right. And finally, the IT security team, uh, in the course of managing a security incident, can place someone in a locked group, and that'll cut them off from VPN if they seem to need to do that. So the point is that there's different groups managed by different authorities that all get rolled together into this access policy in Grouper and that the VPN service uses. Well, here's more information about Grouper if you want to follow up on any of those things. And in the third and last part of this uh, uh, video series for introduction to Grouper will be on the toolkit components. Thanks.